threading. Hi there, I'm Bob Carson, Professor of Geology Emeritus at Whitman College in Walla Walla, Washington, and I love to run rivers all over western United States, and if I get a chance, overseas. For years I've heard about the Illinois River, and I'm on this four-day trip with the Northwest Rafting Company, and the river is spectacular. Right up there, there's a big waterfall. Right over there, there's a little waterfall. We're camped on a gravel bar. And there's a beautiful forest of live oak and Port Arthur cedar and western white pine and ponderosa pine up above us and willows and alders down here, oaks near the river. It's my understanding that the Illinois River and the Kelmeopsis Wilderness Area were protected because of recreation, and botany, and perhaps zoology, the fishing, for a whole bunch of reasons. And I was really surprised to learn that one of the reasons was not the geology. The, the Illinois River runs across the Klamath Mountains which have many sub-ranges and are astride the Oregon-California border. The thing that's particularly interesting about the geology of the Klamath Mountains is that at least five bunches of rocks, which we call terrains, were accreted, were added to North America over the recent hundreds of millions of years. And they are, are very great differences from the Paleozoic and the Mesozoic, going back even more hundreds of millions of years. Their fossils do not match those of North America. They actually have more affinity to Asian critters. And their latitude that we can determine by paleomagnetism is much closer to the equator than we are now. So these bodies of rock have come and slammed against North America, and there was quite a variety in them. Some were oceanic crusts, some were small continental fragments, some were island arcs like the Aleutians, some of them were perhaps shield volcanoes. The variation in the rocks that came here was great to start with. They may have been volcanoes and reefs and ocean floor sediments and ocean basaltic crust itself. But once they got here and they came in at least five packages, they were partially subducted beneath North America, just like the Cascadia subduction zone is doing to the Juan de Fuca plate today. And depending on how deep they went, they had different degrees of metamorphism. And in some cases, they went deep enough to melt, which made igneous bodies like granite uh, within this bunch of rocks. So as we go down the river, we see a huge variation in the outcrops of rocks, all of which have been fairly severely deformed and on every gravel bar, such as the one I'm sitting on, there's a huge variety of rocks. So for example, right here, the rocks that we find behind where our tents are, is right over there, are serpentinite. And serpentinites are basically magnesium and iron and, and oxygen and, and some water. And they are metamorphosed parts from the bottom of the ocean crust. They have very rich in iron and magnesium. In contrast, sitting on the gravel bar are some granite cobbles that have been brought here by the river, and they have very little iron and magnesium. They're mostly sodium and potassium and aluminum and silicon. So there's an extreme diversion in the igneous rocks. Plus, there's quite a bit of difference in the metamorphic rocks. So Today we found some phyllite, which is basically a uh, 
weekly metamorphosed mudstone and we found lots and lots of gneiss, like this rock here, which is also washed down the river, which has these bands in it. And then we found an intense shear zone, which may be the boundary between two of, of these five bodies of rock, again, small continents, island arcs, or whatever, that collided with North America. And then we saw a whole bunch of sedimentary rocks. We saw radiolarian chert. The chert is made of diatoms, which are microscopic and look like clear ornamented Christmas spheres with spikes on them. And we found lots and lots of sandstone. One of the participations in this group found a conglomerate, which is a rock made of pebbles. So again, not only were the igneous and the metamorphic rocks have great variety, but so did the sedimentary rocks. There's evidence in some of the rocks that we have looked at that they came from the deep ocean floor and that as a turbidity current roared down a submarine canyon or the continental slope, it scoured the sediments that were already there, picked up little clasps of mud, and these got incorporated into the rest of the sediment that was coming down in the Tibidi current. Not just sand, which is common in, in silt and clay, but also, in at least one case, gravel, pebbles, were sweeping down to the deeper parts of the ocean. The, the white water here is spectacular. It just never stops. There had been lots of landslides and rock falls into the river that makes it narrow, it constricts it. There are places where the water goes through gorges where the water may be still, as in still water runs deep. But there are also uh, good white water where there are alluvial fans when debris flows have come down tributary streams during heavy rainfall events. Uh, the, the, there's some landforms here that are world class. I'll try to just mention one, and that is potholes. Potholes occur when a swirling current sweeps around boulders and drills a cylindrical hole into rocks. We found one pothole that was three meters in diameter and had boulders up to one meter inside it. So, in summary, this river has spectacular scenery, a huge variety of vegetation, an alternating uh, wider valley and canyons. But above all, there is almost every kind of rock that you can think of, you can find here. I mean, for example, right behind the camera is a vein of quartz. And right over there is a dike of magma that turned into a light-colored granitic-like rock that is shooting through these dark rocks. It's very prominent because of its color and because it's more resistant than the rocks that are right beside me, which are partially sheared. So thank you for listening to me. Let's protect the Illinois River area even more. Let's continue to protect the Kalmyopolis, Kalmyopolis Wilderness area. And let's protect more and more of the whole Klamath Mountain region. Let's, let's conserve, let's preserve, let's enjoy.